And a very warm welcome back to the Andrew Eborn Show with me, Andrew Eborn, and my two very special guests, Errol Musk and uh, Lawrence Fox. And Errol was telling me, wasn't that the guy from Gosford Park? Which I was just like, yes, indeed, a rich family history of acting, uh, a brilliant musician as well. We might be able to persuade him to do something a, a bit later on. Um, but first of all, I, I want to look at the, the shocking news uh, about uh, the sentence which has just been issued uh, to uh, Tommy Robinson. Uh, oh, sorry, I lost you. I'm just saying, so uh, Tommy right. Robinson's just been sentenced. He admitted breaching an injunction. Uh, 57 million people <laughs> watched his last documentary, which probably makes him one of the most popular journalists ever. Um, he's having sentenced. Uh, fill us in on that. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, I'm cutting in and out, so I might have to take these earbuds out if they stop working. Um, yeah, I mean, Tommy Robinson made a film called Silence about... Uh, an attack on a on a boy by another boy uh, and it was covered up and it was the, the poor kid was called a racist and all sorts of things and uh, Tommy made a film about it he was told not to show the film he showed the film and he's going to jail it's a civil matter right it's you know this is contempt of court is a civil matter it's not a criminal matter so they put him in Woolwich Crown Court which has an underground tunnel to Belmarsh the highest uh, security prison in Great Britain and he's a political prisoner and they are going to put him in prison with some of the nastiest people in the United Kingdom. And he's going to, as he said to me the other day, he said, they'll put him in solitary confinement. But in between that, all sorts of things can happen as you move from your cell to have a shower, to your cell, to eat, all these sorts of things. He said a day feels like a week, a week feels like a month and a month feels like a year. So it's it's just a continuation of the very, very authoritarian regime that we've got in the United Kingdom. Four out of five Britons did not vote for this uh, socialist nightmare that we've got. Uh, Keir Starmer, who is jailing people uh, willy-nilly with kangaroo courts for, um, for crimes like tweeting or making a film, journalism, whilst he's releasing serial sex offenders, violent criminals, from prison to make space for them so um we'll see what what happens but uh, an example has been made of tommy and it's and it's made to to terrify anyone who wants to open their mouth and criticize this corrupt regime that runs the country currently and, and putting that all into context, as you say, he's two-tier Keir uh, and uh, Elon's basically branded him that accordingly. Well, what's your take on that, Errol? Yes, you know, I was on Talk TV with London Talk TV the other night, and they asked me the same question. I said, you know, in my opinion, uh, this uh, is uh, Britain has regressed 400 years. And, um, you know, we're back in the times of uh, Puritan Cromwell and perhaps Henry VIII, and, uh, you know, this is crazy. Uh, you know, England has always been a, a sort of, a, um, you know, a sort of beacon for the world uh, of uh, what things can be and how things can be better. You know, England was always the place that led the way. And, um, you know, half the most famous people in the world come from England in the history of the world, you know, uh, in the recent history of the world anyway. And... Um, so uh, I can't believe that the British public are going to put up with this because it is so un-English that, um, you know, that I just can't imagine that, you know, we're not talking about Germany here during the 30s. The Germans are different. Uh, they are not like the English people. The English people were a few, you know, uh, generations ahead of the Germans in terms of questioning and, and, and saying, wait, we're not, we're not prepared to put up with this. And... Um, so I, ca I can't see this going on because if nothing happens, if these people that have been uh, put in uh, prison for expressing perfectly legitimate, uh, uh, you know, complaints about the way things are being run in the country uh, and, and how they feel their country is being damaged, then um, if nothing is done about it, then it means that the British public have uh, acquiesced and have joined forces with the government. Uh, you know, um, so... You know that's what the Germans did during the thirties, and uh, you know afterwards, of course, uh, no one, no one who ever belonged to a, a group that supported the German, uh, the Nazis and stuff, it, it could be found. But uh, and so that will happen again in in when once Starmer is ousted, no one will be found who supported him. But um, in reality, uh, you know what's happening now is uh, is shocking, terribly frightening. Um, 
that they're taking uh, prisoners who've committed uh, actual serious crimes and releasing them onto the streets and placing uh, ordinary men and women in in those cells in place of them. I mean, this is just totally not England. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think this case, we had the wife of Tory councillor who was jailed for stirring racial hatred uh, after the South Border uh, attack. Uh, a child mind is what she was, Lucy uh, Connolly. Uh, basically, she, she was uh, jailed for 31 months. Um, what was your take on that, Lawrence? Appalling. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, lottery, Lawrence. It, it, sorry, it was. Um, it's appalling. You read her tweet. She she was. This woman has no previous uh, police record. She doesn't directly incite violence because she says you can you can burn it all down for all I care. So she doesn't directly in, in, incite violence. It she she it, it was a foolish and badly worded tweet, and I get it. It was wrong, but um, she should she she was immediately deleted it. She was incredibly remorseful and she's now sat in prison as sex offenders and paedophiles are on the streets. And I want to know who is a bigger danger to society, a woman whose child died as a result of massive neglect from our socialist healthcare system. And um, who obviously this uh, incident triggered in her that maternal pain and anguish or a paedophile. And um, I'm sorry, I'm uh, every single time I, I wait for the British. I wait for the British to to wake up to what's being done for them. But we have this, we have this very, as uh, Errol was saying, you know, we're sort of beak in a cradle of democracy, and we're being it's just being eroded. We have no free speech protections, and we have no protections against this sort of authoritarianism. So one, ha what, what we'll have to see is what the reaction to Tommy's uh, imprisonment is, and how long. Again, in the same problem that America has, it's like how long will people just calmly up with being lied to and the corruption and the cheating that the political class involved themselves in. Exactly. It's emphasizing exactly. this two-tier system because they, we, the, the similar thing which is dominating the headlines today, you've got this Labour MP who was caught on camera punching a man in the street, uh, Mike Amesbury, uh, his Cheshire is his constituency. Uh, what should happen to him, do you think, Lawrence? Well, I think, you know, one punch can kill, although it was more than one punch. You know, it was it was more. It's an, it's assault. It's violent assault. It's it's actual bodily harm. There will be sentencing guidelines for that. And if he doesn't get sentenced properly, then what will happen is people will get more and more and more angry. But it seems that they're so cocky and confident that this regime that they don't care. You know, you've had you've had kids that they've let out drug dealers and stuff. They've let out of prison, posing in front of Bentleys, going, "Thanks, nice one, Keir." And and the the prime minister does. He's been very similar to. Uh, he played the Joe Biden game, you know, of going, oh, "I'm a very moderate, normal guy. Just vote for me. Labour will bring change. It's all very good." You know, I'm a safe pair of hands. The grown ups are back in charge. Shtick. And it turns out that he's not at all. He's a rabid communist, and um, it, that's that's very dangerous. So, what will what will happen? Woof! I I dread to think. I I mean, how many stages are there before? I I my suggestion is that people just stop paying tax. I don't want to pay tax for this, or I think there should be a private sector strike, because the public sector are not the most productive part of our economy. The private sector are the most productive part of our economy, and I'm sure that. Um, if we if we resisted them in a the the state in a in a more you know well thought out way we'd be all right. But I'm I can't, if the minute they start raising things like reparations and things like that, which we're starting to get fed to us in England now, I, I'm not going to pay another penny in tax. I'm not paying tax to someone who was a slave two hundred years ago to to someone who was a who's not who's never experienced slavery or anything like the conditions that both white, black, and any coloured people were experiencing just up to a hundred years ago before fossil fuels took the West into the into the you know a new era of of a new technological revolution. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and actually, it, <laughs> Romans, you go to the Vikings who invaded over here. Uh, what's your take on that, Errol? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you're going to ask for reparations, I think the British should ask for reparations from Rome, you know, for coming into England and uh, messing, you know, around there for 400 years. They, they need to pay for that. But uh, no, it's a bit of a joke, really. This was this was all put into Tommy's film, and and it resulted oh, in I a see, defa I see, yes. oh, and, I and see. it resulted in a defamation action with which Tommy I lost. I haven't seen and, the film. And and as as part, 
Um, uh, basically, but as as part of that, it was part of a de defamation action. Uh, Tommy lost the defamation action again because he did show the film again. That was contempt of court, which is why he was arrested and is now sitting in prison. Um, but the point is. Justify is that a justifiable punishment for what happens? Uh, and I think your take on that, Lawrence, is very clear, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sorry, I just lost the last bit. My ear pods decided to just die. putting it into context for the error about it. it was the subject of the defamation part of that. Yeah, uh, the punishment he's just received uh, is, is that uh, commensurate with the crime? Inverted commas. Well, also, the, the, the defamation laws in the United Kingdom are so ridiculous, having uh, been through them myself. I um, I think what's very important in any democracy is that one has faith in the uh, judiciary, primarily, the police and the judiciary. You need to know that those that are, are, are applying the law are doing so without fear and without favour. And in this case, and in many cases in this two-tier society we're living in, we're seeing that they're not doing that. And I think Tommy did know what he was doing, but he's one of those guys who just will not stop. And no matter what the establishment have tried to do to him and the media have tried to do to him to smear him as a racist and all the things that they've done to him, he's not any of those things and he's never given up. So I think he saw this as, as a piece of martyrdom for himself. And that's... Um, that's on that's on him is it you know he he's gonna he's gonna face some pretty horrible times i mean i i i just pray that he gets through prison you know because it, it, i i don't I, my faith in all of these institutions is very very muted since um since covid really uh, everything has really gone downhill for in my and, and we've, we've also had the tragic news in the last few days about one of the uh, so-called rioters in in his 60s who took his own life as a result of going yeah, I mean, that was uh, Peter Lynch, who had shouted, called the police officers scum and had waved a placard. And um, it is absolutely horrendous. He was then put in the, the overwhelming majority of prisoners in the prison that he was sent to, not overwhelming majority, but a high percentage are uh, Pakistani Muslims. And they, Keir Starmer, our prime minister, absolutely made um made it very clear that or anyone who was protesting the or dreadful massacre of these three young girls uh, which we still have no information the the trial date for the perpetrator of that crime uh preliminary trial date was cancelled and hasn't been and we've been given no reason and this man sadly took his own life um i think that's keir starmer's blood on his hands i think that um I think that this stuff will not be forgotten. It's not far no. right to object to your children being murdered. That's not far right. No. That was the issue. I mean, it's all to do with these three little girls, B.B. King, Elsie uh, Dot Stancombe and, and Alice uh, Da Silva Aguea. Um, a, a horrible attack at, uh, at Heart Space Centre, uh, which happened. Um, originally, the report came out from Channel 3 with misinformation, saying it was an immigrant. The actual person was Axel Rudakubana, who was a Welsh native who lives in Banks, Lancashire. But it was that spread of misinformation which uh, led to all sorts of uh, things. But the clampdown on it, and uh, uh, Elon's been front and centre of this as well. There've been people talking about him spreading misinformation and uh, criminal action should be taken. What are your thoughts on that, Errol? Well, you know, uh, bring it on. I mean, the main thing is, uh, the thing is to... I'm sorry to Lawrence, he makes very good points. The, the thing is to try and get the bulk of the people to wake up. You know, the, the, the British have always been quite well known for, you know, uh, not responding to a situation like, you know, impulsively and very quickly. Uh, they, they take their time. And, uh, you know, uh, in fact, that's probably better. And so that when they do uh, turn, they, they turn much more solidly than a, a, than someone or a group that would turn very quickly. They, 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 they take their time. And, um, yeah, so the... Uh, the thing to hope is that the that that people will, uh, uh, you know, that that an awakening will occur. Uh, coming back to Elon, uh, you were saying that uh, they are uh, saying that he's uh, far right. Now, I, I was on this talk 
radio talk TV the other uh, evening, and and the the man that I was that was interviewing me was saying to me uh, from London Talk Radio, he was saying to me, now that Elon is far right, that's that was his words. So I said, I stopped him. I said, what do you mean Elon is far right? Elon is not far right. You know. And uh, what, what, what his... I said Elon is dead center. Elon is dead center. He's not far right. And and, that, and when they had these riots, for example, or so called riots, they were saying that um, all these people that were in the streets uh, protesting, you know, the circumstances they're living in, uh, are all far right, are all far right protesters. That was the description, the general description. They're far right protesters. Now that's totally wrong. They're they're really just normal people who have just had enough and who've come out. And in that respect, Elon is not a far right or a far left. He's a dead center, dead center, and um, quite happy to uh, encourage events like Burning Man and all the sort of stuff that are kind of weird and, and uh, over the top on the sort of liberal side in America, as well as saying, I don't want this country to be ruined. I want it to stay the way it is. So Elon is not far right, you know. So I forget your question, but I would say that um, it's going to have to be a case of the population coming to a head, the situation coming to a head, and the general population in England and places like England that are in similar situ- in similar circumstances saying, wait a minute, this has got to stop. And um, the is, this is government it's, can't it's go the, on with what it's doing. It's, it's the responsibility, uh, Errol. A lot of people are sort of saying that people, uh, owners of these platforms and the problem with Telegram, where the CEO and founder of that was arrested in spread of misinformation and, and the responsibility for uh, content which is on that platform. People have said a similar thing uh, should happen to Elon. I, I mean, are you worried about that? Well, you know, again, I'd say, you know, bring it on, bring it on. Let's see what you can do. I mean, uh, running around and evading uh, these people and uh, thinking that if you are a good person or you're the, in their eyes, the sort of uh, a, a sheep that agrees with them and carries on, uh, you know, uh, agreeing with everything they, they want, uh, like the European Union and so on, uh, with that uh, telegram crowd. I mean, no, um, uh, you you want things to come to a head. You want a situation, uh, if you are now ready for, uh, you know, to, 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 to stop these, uh, to, to fight. If you're ready to fight for what you believe in, then you don't want to scurry away every time uh, they say, look what we're going to do to you, look what we're going to do to you. You know, as you, as uh, Lawrence pointed out about uh, Tommy, I think, uh, saying that uh, they're trying to scare people, this is what's going to happen to you. So you, wa- you want to uh, encourage them to have a go, have a go, you know. And um, uh, the, uh, the other evening, uh, I was told by this uh, presenter, which I didn't agree with him, uh, he, I don't know what his name is, uh, uh, but he said... Um, that ninety five percent of the people in England hate Elon. Well, well, so I, I, said, I, I don't believe that's true, Lawrence. No, it's rubbish. We, what we're witnessing is again. I mean, and it is thanks to Elon as well. Is we're witnessing a complete a new media shift as well. So, you know, you saw from Trump appearing on Rogan to, you know, all of the PBD podcasts and all that sort of stuff, the fact that the man can hold himself for three hours in a perfectly normal, reasonable conversation, that there is a deep, there is a deep desire within people to understand people. And for years, we've been given these five minute clips of people on TV and they say the most random and, you know, hyperbolic thing that they can come out with just because they've got five minutes to do it. But we now, we, we've witnessed the end. This election will see the end of the legacy media. And I think that the legacy media are, are like the Democrats. They don't mind. Uh, they wouldn't mind if they turned the whole country into ashes as long as they got to rule over those ashes, as Errol said. So we've the good news is that we're witnessing the end of the legacy lying, dying media. The, the, the thing that we need to focus on now, I think, as, as Errol is right and others have said, is you've got to wait for them to overreach because... 
I, yes. I'm a bit more spiritual about the whole thing in terms of the fact that, that you know, the, the ends always justify the means with the left and there just are no ends. That's the problem. So the means are the whole thing. And it's if it's a battle between good and evil, which I think Elon thinks it is, and I certainly think it is myself, then the only thing that the devil is famous for is overreaching. And yeah. he will. They'll they'll overreach and it, and they'll overreach one too many times and then they'll be have to crawl back under the rock from which the hateful little ideology came from. Yeah, you, you make, excellent. You make well put. So, yeah, go go for it, Daryl. Yes, yeah, so, so well put there by uh, Lawrence. So well put. <laughs> I Thank need you. to write that down. <laughs> 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 no, no, well put. No, um, yes, ninety-five uh, percent. They said of the of England of the English people hate Elon. I said to this man. You know, that's not true. He said to me, oh, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not true. I said, the can-do people in England will most certainly not hate Elon. The useless people might. And I don't think there are more useless people than can-do people in England. I think it's probably more can-do people. So I said, all the can-do people will most certainly uh, not only support Elon, but are in awe of him and will definitely uh, uh, support Elon or like Elon, uh, not hate him. Uh, the people who hate him are the people who can't do anything, who are who are quite useless, and uh, and, and the only way of dealing with their uselessness is to, uh, you know, sort of hate people who, who appear to uh, be successful, and um, mm -hmm. you know, while I'm on that sort of thing, I mean, Elon is a person. He's, he's he struggles he, every day, is just like all of us. Uh, another day, you know, it's another day like yesterday. Every day for him, you know, and um, well, he I mean, could have. You, you, you may in the media for people to sort of bandy around irresponsible statistics like that which are... wasn't invited to the investments uh summit over here by keir starmer and i asked you what 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 his reaction you were saying that actually like most people he was actually very hurt by it well i wouldn't say he's very hurt but he certainly would feel little hurt and wonder why uh you know a big country like england is not uh uk is not uh you know, taken note of what he's done, uh, I, I would imagine, I would, I, you know, I haven't asked him about it, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't even bother to ask him about it, quite frankly. I know, of course, that at the same time, he, his personality is such that he doesn't, he gets on with other things. He doesn't uh, sit and mull over things like that. And, um, you know, there's no doubt whatsoever that not inviting uh, Elon uh, uh, turned the event into a basically a second-class event, uh, not a first-class event. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people see him as a champion of free speech and 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 we need we do need that. I, I think I mean George Orwell, we're sort of living in these Orwellian times, but he says it if liberty means anything, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. But there's got to be a balance, doesn't there? And you mentioned about defamation, Lawrence, and uh, the balance between the law and what rights and where should we draw the line? What are your views? Well, I'd, someone wrote an article, I think it was a bit tongue in cheek, but I rather liked it, saying um, that we should get rid of defamation law and bring back duelling. Because it would, <laughs> it would really, uh, it would clear up a, a lot of problems. You know, if you're that upset about it, let's have a duel. Um, I, I don't, I, I think that, you know, we've all been asleep at the wheel in society for the last many decades, thinking that every institution we trusted was OK. But the long march through all of our institutions has uh, has now is just releasing out into the workforce, uh, uh, graduation after graduation, a bunch of totally brainwashed, woke Marxists who are so ungrateful for the things that their forebears achieved and built. And to those people, Elon is a despicable figure. Because, as Errol says, he's done something. He gets up. But the, the thing that I find very even worse about them is the fact that they dehumanise. They don't think that people like us who happen to believe different things to them actually have feelings. And, you know, they'll say the most horrendous and horrific things. And Orwell mm. is right. You do not have free speech for your views. You have it for someone else's views. That's the whole point of free speech. It's a level. It levels the playing field and it gives a man with nothing the power to to take down a man with everything. And that that's a great and noble aspirational trait of the West. And the minute it's gone, the West goes with it. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think I do think at the moment, I mean, Keir Starmer is sort of basically has been the biggest threat to free speech. We had this higher education 
Ministry, which became law or should have become law. Uh, it was basically passed by everybody, even got royal assent. Um, but the Starmageddon government uh, refused to implement it. What was your take on that? He it's uh, it, that, that is just terrible, isn't it? You know, but yeah, I, I, I saw that. I saw that happening. These laws, we just challenged the government. Uh, we tried to judicially review the government over teaching children transgenderism in school. And they said, oh, well, it's not really real guidance. It's just draft guidance. So we've got our children are being educated by bits of paper written by people that aren't even qualified paralegals. And you're not allowed to challenge it. So your child will come home uh, uh, every day, whether they whether it buys into the rubbish and the appallingness of the transgender movement. But it's still being indoctrinated with that every day in school. So if you've got the education system has been captured, the police force have been captured, the judiciary have been captured, and the government are stamping out all free speech, you're not living in a democracy. Whatever you are living in is much closer to what Errol was talking about earlier, which is, uh, you know... A, a free fascist state, or or which is what these people are. Yeah, I, and I I, yeah. I do like the idea of jewels. I think that's a very interesting way of approaching defamation <laughs> uh, law. Uh, Errol, what what do you think that the, the limit should be between the balance of free speech and obviously incitement to violence is is one thing. And well, you know, one of the things we really should be grateful for is that. As Lawrence actually said earlier on, a few years ago, most of us were mushrooms, you know, uh, you know, like in the forest uh, under a pile of leaves. We didn't know what was going on, and um, we, we we sort of believed everything. We, we we I certainly did. I I believed a lot of the things that uh, I was told uh, by uh, you know various uh, governments and things. I I, for example, uh, was very happy when they went in and took out Saddam Hussein because he was going to nuke everybody, you know, and stuff like that. You know, we just sort of believed everything. And nowadays, uh, in the last few years, certainly in the last, I'd say about three years, especially, I think this pandemic had something to do with it. Uh, people have started to wake up and say, wait a minute, there's something, something's wrong. And I find that even the most simple people that I come into contact with um, ha have something to say now when I go and see them. And, um, they say things that I would never have expected them to say uh, in the past. So uh, this morning I went to have a tire fitted to one of my vehicles. And the man was a tire fitter. And he said to me, oh, it's wonderful what Elon's doing. It's wonderful what Elon's doing. You know, and and, and uh, Trump, you know, Trump and Elon, uh, you know. And so people are, are sort of people who in the past wouldn't have known a thing about all this, uh, you know, just sort of gone on with their daily lives, presuming, that the government is doing its best for them, are now waking up and seeing. Wait a minute, there's a, they've been hoodwinked yeah. all along, and um, people are more than ever um, questioning. Yeah. What is and, interesting, and, and Errol, as well, that there's been a, a new report has been published saying that trust in politics has declined significantly since the election. Yes. I always say that trust comes in on foot and leaves on horseback. What can be done, Lawrence? Final thought: What can be done to restore trust in politics, Lawrence? Well, as you, as you said, tr trust is very uh, easily lost and very hard to gain back. I think we need to have a political party in the United Kingdom which doesn't dilly-dally around, that does um, a version of what Elon's doing with his PAC to, you know, incentivize people to to sign up to very, the very most basic foundational principles of, of what keeps the West running. I think we need a political party in the United Kingdom that uh, that addresses these these the, the core issues of our time which are um, the diversity is our strength agenda, because it isn't palpably, deals with multiculturalism, mass immigration, uh, social cohesion, social assimilation, religious assimilation, uh, gets rid of um, DEI and has a word with itself, a long and decent conversation with itself about uh, its past. Because if we, those are my, both my grandparents were wounded in the, in the war and they fought for us. And the covenant between uh, one generation and the next is that you pass on a freer and better and more healthy world to the next generation. And at the current rate that we're going, we're going to pass on a poorer, colder and more hungry world to our children. And we need a political party that gets up and stands up and says, we will stop the boats. We will stop net zero. We will work towards net zero. But we're not going to immiserate everybody for no reason. And we need to we just need this, the government out of our lives a lot more. There's too much government in our lives. Yes, absolutely. 
Oh, well, so well said. Um, yes, um, I'm not as despondent as we might, the three of us might have sounded during this talk. I think that uh, there's a lot of hope. Uh, a few years ago, uh, not that long ago, my son uh, called me evil for saying that uh, Trump is the way to go. And um, he actually told the press that he considers me to be an evil person uh, for, for, for believing in uh, someone who in his mind he had been taught was a was was like Hitler. This is Elon, my son, and my other son, Kimball. And now, uh, you know, a few years later, I not only have Elon saying to me, um, "Perhaps you were right." No, no, he's gone way beyond that. He's run far away ahead of me, and he has lifted Trump up by by his, on his shoulders, and he's running along with Trump, saying, "This is the way. This is the way." So. You know, uh, it, I don't know what you would call that, but it's almost miraculous. And it's so, it's so much so that I don't even say anything to, to him. I'm saying it now on the air. I shouldn't. I hope he doesn't see this. But at any rate. Uh, he watches every you know, episode, Errol. <laughs> eh? I say he watches Sorry? every episode. <laughs> so <he's gonna> be... <laughs> he probably does. I'll tell you why I think he does, because um, I received some messages from my family and I thought, wait a minute, I said that on on one of the Andrew Eborn shows. And I was wondering, did, is, is Tosca watching this? Because she must have passed it on to Elon. Anyway, it was uh, to do with his Elon's mother that we spoke. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. So, yeah. But coming back to what I was saying, uh, you know, people are waking up. People are waking up. I, I don't know if I'm correct, but I heard Lawrence say that a few years ago, he wouldn't have thought the way he does now. Well, I think it, it is so important to question everything. And well, even J.D. Vance, you know, in yes. American Hitler, uh, he, he had his road to Damascus and uh, he explained it very well in the press. Rather cleverly, he sort of turned around and said, well, when I saw him, was the light, yes. the, the press have been lying to us all these years. Um, gentlemen, we've run out of time, but it's been an absolute delight as always. Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us. Errol, thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully you're... Pleasure. Pleasure. Lovely to meet you, Errol.